at this time we have more Windows emulators for Android phones than ever before. Emulators like Exegear, Fexamo, Box for Droid, Thermux Box, Will Later, and for the next year, Kazia. What do you think? Do you think Exegear Windows emulator is still worth to try in 2023? I will answer this question. So, let's go! Hey everyone, welcome back to Coraline channel. In this video I wanna talk about an official Exegear history. What happened and where is it now? I wasn't sure if there was a history for Exegear emulator, so I decided to share my experience to familiarize you more with this emulator. Before starting, I should say that in this video I'm gonna talk about an official Exegear updates made by enthusiastic developers. You might ask yourself, where did it start? In fact, its initial beginning goes back to before Corona, before the coronavirus spread all over the world. In 2019, after months, the Exegear was patched by some developers in July 2019, so that user could usually use Exegear without any time limit for hours. Time limitation? You heard right, time limitation. Before Exegear was permanently discontinued in February 2019, if you wanted to use more than 15 minutes, you had to purchase the app to use. Of course, at that time, a limited version were shared for free in various forms, and I don't know the main and definite reason why the project was stopped, but I think financial problem will one of those reasons. And a year later, in 2020, Eltec, the founder of Exeger Emulator, sold the program to a Huawei company. However, the official termination of the program didn't mean to be the project was completely abandoned. A number of enthusiast developers have volunteered to develop this program unofficially over the years. And perhaps the reason you have heard less about this emulator over the years is because some believe that an official version of this program cannot be trusted and it is possible that your phone will be affected with malware and viruses. That's why the Exegear program was not popular as a later. In 2019, users didn't talk about the performance and how much frame rate the games get and whether they run smoothly. Most of the talk was about compatibility which games run on Exegear. Let me also mention this point. Before the attention gradually shifted toward Exegear, there were other emulators such as DOSBox or Limbo Simulator that worked like a virtual machine and emulated real windows. But it was not suitable for the games and because of the slow speed. My first acquaintance with this emulator dates back to June 2019, when I remember that YouTubers used to upload gameplay and tutorials on how to run Windows games and applications on Android phone using Exegear. YouTubers such as Akira Yuki, Mishka Kolos, GameTage, and other people I forgot their name. They were looking for solution to run Windows games on phones. 2D, isometric, and all strategy games could be run with 20 or 3 frame rates. But 3D games using root and overclocking could be run with maximum of 10 FPS. It was really a difficult time and many people wished to be able to play Warcraft 3 smoothly, not just with 3 or frame rate. I will not go into the small details of this simulator, because it would be long and boring. But enthusiast Russian and Chinese developers played a significant role in the development and improvement of this simulator. And of course, I must also say that it would not have been possible without the testers. In fact, both were important. And as a tester, I have to admit that running games under 10 frame rate really require a lot of patience, especially when the graphic processing was through the software, not the hardware. And in this part of video, I'm gonna tell you the important and official updates of Exegear Emulator. Number 1. The possibility of upgrading the Wine version inside Exegear from January 2020. Exegear Emulator uses the Wine like other emulators. In 2019, there was not such a thing as a Wine version 6, 7, and 8. There was only one version, Wine version 3, which had minimal limitation in running games and a few games could be run, which had two reasons. The first reason being the lack of support for graphic processing, and the second reason being Wine and an ability to run many games and program. I must point out that even in the Linux operating system, users use workarounds to run games. Number 2. 
adding new control and mouth in the fourth quarter of 2020. One of the issues of Exegear was control on it. You couldn't use the mouth right click, or if you could, it was difficult to use. But finally, after a long time in November 2020, the touchpad control was added and it became easy for everyone to use the mouth. Number 3. Adding a Virgil Overlay Hardware Graphic Processing Layer in March 2021 for rooted phones and Adreno GPU processor. As you know, hardware graphic processing was not possible at the time and only software rendering was used, which did not give you a high frame rate because the processor power was used from the CPU and there was no drive to support it. So, using the Virgil Overlayer for 3D acceleration was possible only for rooted phones with Adreno 618 processor. Number 4. Adding the first Vertio hardware graphic processing in November 2021 for Adreno GPU 618 processor. One of the important events was the addition of hardware graphic processing to the simulator for the first time. In fact, the idea of this graphic processing goes back to July 2021, when a user named Grima04 managed to run the Exegear server in Termux using a scripts and throw it by integrating Virgil plus Turnip he created Vert.io graphic processing in Exegear experimentally. After a few months, in November, this processing was added by Chinese developers inside the Exegear and we had a 3D acceleration processing for this first time. Number 5. Creating the Input Bridge program, a suitable replacement for easy touch control on the screen with many possibilities to use it in the emulator. Number 6. At Turnip and Zig Hardware graphic processing in February 2022 for Adreno 618 processor. A month or two months after the release of Virtai graphic processing, in February, the first version of Turnip Sync was released by Alexworks in cooperation with developers, which was faster than Virtio in terms of speed, but was less stable, and some games could be run only for 20 minutes. A few months later, in June 2022, the graphics processing improved to 80% stability and improved over time. Let me also say that two users named Stridhuri and Alien find a way to increase the speed of games by changing CSMT to 3. Number 7. Adding multi wine. The possibility of having multiple wine inside an APK in October 2022. Before the multi wine feature was added, each APK installation file was assigned to one version of wine. And the problem was that it occupied a lot of storage. This update made the Exigure occupy less space and have several versions at the same time. Number 8. The appearance of mouse pointer in December 2022. One of the annoying things, especially for users like me who mostly play strategy games that deal with the mouse, was the invincibility of the mouse pointer on the screen. Exigure's X11 display server was old and didn't have this feature, but the developers found a way and added this to the Exigure. Number 9. Adding Wine SL or Selectable Wine feature instead of Multi Wine in February 2023. Unfortunately, since the storage of my phone is 128GB and it doesn't have a large capacity that I want to have several versions of Wine in my phone, and as a tester who has to try different games in different versions of Wine, then this idea came to my mind. Instead of having 3 or 5 versions in this emulator at the same time, which takes up more storage, or having to test the game in on each version every time, I have only Wine version of Wine, but a selectable one. This idea was later improved by other developers and made available to all users. Number 10. The possibility of using DXVK graphic processing in March 2023 for Adreno GPU processor. Implementation of DXVK using a Vulkan was one of the best events that happened in the graphic processing for Exegear which is actually the fastest graphic processing and 3D acceleration ever. Number 11. Added support for Adreno 7 series GPU in June 2023. As far as I know, since the graphic processing of Generation 1 and Generation 2 are limited by the processor power and is still being optimized, they are not as optimal as 865 or 870 processor and it will take time to see it improve in the future for this generation and higher processor. Number 12. Integration of Termux X11 server with Exegear emulation in June 2023. Running DXVK was experimental. The processor of setting up and running it in Exegear was a bit difficult for users. And after months in this update, the new X11 display server 
was replaced with the old display. Number 30. And the last update is the ability of to use maximum power of the processor in some games using DRI3 for Adreno processor in August 2023. In Exegear, the games do not necessarily use all the CPU and GPU power for the game, and the maximum processor power is not used, but this update makes it possible to use the maximum power in some games. And now, with all that I said, does Exegear emulator is worth trying in 2023? If you are one of those users who are into X86 games and have memories with all games, despite the unofficial updates coming for this simulator, I have to say, yes, it is still worth trying. Yeah, I know it's cool, but it's still cool. If you're interested to know more information and details about Exegear Windows Emulator, you can also check Exegear Wiki website. And the last question, what do you think? Does Exegear going to an end of the life? Do you still use Exegear? If yes, what game you usually playing on it? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will have more videos soon, so if you want to support me, hit the subscribe button and share video with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.